Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to gain a huge amount of depth in your smartphone filmmaking and video creations with just your smartphone and ND filters, no gimbal whatsoever. Now with a lot of smartphone filmmaking and video creating, images can look very flat and a bit plain. Whereas with these eight tips I'll be sharing with you today, your audience are gonna feel a lot more immersed in your shots, it's gonna look a lot higher budget, and it's gonna create something that really has a film-like quality to it. And I guarantee there'll be tips in this video that you have not heard in other smartphone filmmaking channels. And the first tip is leading lines. Now, what are leading lines? Well, if you look at this image here and you look at the path, the red bollards, the rooftops of these buildings, they're all pointing us into one direction and that's the area right at the end of this shot. So it creates a frame at the end and it guides the audience's eyes from near the camera, a shallow depth of field to a deep depth of field. And that is really gonna give you a huge variety of depth of fields to use. And you can use it for a dark passageway at the end, like in this shot with straight lines, creating something a bit more moody. You can have them not so straight lines with a light at the end of the pathway. So maybe it's a bit more of an uplifting area or a scene that you're creating, you know, a documentary film or vlogging. And you can use this anywhere at any time. And you'll start to see leading lines everywhere you look, whether it's in cities, in parks, in forests. These are great things to use. And in this long, long path, it creates a nice visual as well. And sometimes you can even confuse the audience if you've got a pathway like this that splits into two and it could be a point for a character or something in your traveling vlogs where you can walk down. You can also see that leading lines don't have to be straight and you can play with different angles as well. So get low down, looking up at these angles, looking up at rooftops, windows, gutterings, that kind of thing. And in this lit up tunnel here where it's leading lines, I use this in Anxiety Train to show a pivotal point in the film where the main character decides that she needs to actually face her fears and the whole light changing within a tunnel really worked to that effect. Now you can use the grid guide as well that's actually in your native iPhone app or smartphone app and you can use it from Cinema P3 Pro camera which I use as well to get the perfect framing. And the next tip is painting with available light. Now this is something that people don't really talk about when it comes to smartphone filmmaking but it's really really important technique to get used to and start using. In this shot here, you can see we've got a huge variety of different lightings. We've got the dark, dark shadows. We've got the cooler light blue, light reflecting off of the stairs on the right, the warmer color on the left going down this delivery tunnel, and the daylight near the camera creating a real variety of colors, which is creating a depth of field. Now in this shot, you've got shadows, you've got colors, you've got light. All of this is really adding something magical. And in this shot, you can see you've got bright daylight. We've got a huge variety of different things going on here to create that sort of depth of field. Where on the right hand side you've got these shadows giving you texture on the right hand side with their different shapes. You've got these yellow and pink lights going down the tunnel creating a depth of field as well. There's a huge variety within these shots that will give you something really special so always be out looking for these kind of things. Now this shot's got a huge variety as well and a good example of getting a variety of lighting in one shot to create depth and texture. On the right you've got neon lights in the foreground creating that initial texture light shadows on the top left where the dark is meeting the light and kind of grading out like that. And then you've got deep shadows on the near side as well as the far side. This is creating a huge variety in this shot. And with the light, when it turns into daylight towards the end of the shot, that's creating depth as well, as well as the people at the end of the shot being silhouetted and it's a beautiful shot. So really think about how you're using the sunlight, the shadows, the lighting from what's around you. Reflections as well can create really nice looks with the available light. This tunnel where you've got really bright light at the end is creating a really unique and stunning look and it makes it look like the distance in the end is miles away creating a really interesting look. My next tip, tip number three, is get creative with your foreground. Now this is something that gets mentioned a lot in filmmaking channels but I want to go into some extra depth, pun intended, on this technique. Now here you can see with these huge almost skyscrapers behind these branches and wires that have got the vines wrapping around and create nice depth. Here when you're looking through the seat and you can see the destination in the front that gives you depth as well. And getting something in the foreground just makes everything more interesting and immerses you in the world. So if we move behind the plant here, you can create a really nice introductory shot, an opening shot to a film or documentary, whatever you're making, could be a music video as well. And it just adds so much depth and class to your shot and really ups the budget and the feel of production value as well. Now in this shot, you can see we've got some plain buildings, some light and shadows playing there, but nothing too interesting. But we get between two pillars, which are in the entranceway to this courtyard, you can see it instantly gives you a bit more intrigue and makes you feel like you're involved in the world and you're actually walking through it with the camera. 
Here you can see the tassels blowing away, giving you that depth to the red lantern. And the sky obviously is far away, tricking your eyes. And then you can use your environment anywhere. So look at what's around you, look at how you can use them. So here we're creating almost a alleyway between these two parts of a broken tree stump to create a frame for people to walk through, creating extra interest. So get really creative with your environment when it comes to the foreground. Now, one tip I virtually never hear people say is to use scale to your advantage in creating depth. Now here you can see this cathedral at the end of the pathway looking really big, obviously it's taller than the buildings around it, but you can make it look much, much bigger. So a lookup shot adds dominance to a subject and that's what you want to do in a lot of your shots to create that kind of powerful feel. And you can make anything look much more powerful, whether it's a person, a subject, an object, a building, just by leaning down and looking up at it. And then you can start to mix in the foreground as well to create a higher budget feel. Now these stairs look huge at the bottom and get smaller to the top, creating that depth of field as well, creating that scale. This line here looks large, but when you actually get closer to it, it looks even bigger. And when you change the angle and the framing, you can make the buildings next to it create that even bigger feel for the subject in the foreground. Tip number five on creating more depth in your smartphone filmmaking and video creations is to rack focus. So racking focus is essentially when you have the focus in a shallow depth of field like this where your subject closest to the lens is really nice and clear in view and focus and then you rack focus putting that focus away to a deep depth of field or deeper depth of field to whatever you want to create that sense of depth as well. And this is a really good storytelling technique regardless of what you're making with your phone because you can bring the audience attention from one thing to another just by racking the focus. So here we can see in Cinema P3 Pro camera, I can actually rack focus in an automatic way by creating a pre-made focus pool. So I just choose what my point A is gonna be and then leave that alone so it's selected. I can then go and choose my point B and point C and by tapping one or the other, it actually racks focus automatically so you don't have to pull up and down on the actual dial. You can just set up the automatic focus pull, press one button and it's all working for you. You can use this in Filmic Pro as well and I know you can do this with B-Scan that has a really good automatic focus pull system too. So really you're guiding the audience's eyes through all these techniques to where you want them to look at. So first we've got the plants here in the foreground, rack focus to a deeper depth of field revealing a building where maybe someone's walking past. And I use this in my short film Anxiety Train as well to reveal that the main character has left something very important and it's a pivotal part of the story. Tip number six is using a push in or pull out movement with the camera. Now this is something that's really interesting used to create depth so you can make the audience think they're seeing through the eyes of a person or a subject when really actually when you're pulling out you're revealing the whole location and it's tricking the audience into believing something that maybe they're not actually seeing for real. Here, pulling back through all these trees that are coming out creates a huge sense of depth and things passing past the camera lens are always gonna create an extra sense of depth anyway. So it's a really good technique to reveal things, to hide things and to create that little bit of extra interest for the audience. And again, you're immersing the audience in the world that you're creating. Now here you can see we're actually revealing the waterfall bit by bit as we come through these pillars and it just adds something again, a bit more high budget for your shots. And it just makes everything feel a lot more unique and interesting than simply having flat shots all the time, creating something that looks okay. And it can be used for sure, I've used them, but it's just really good to get a variety of shots. Tip number seven, camera movement. So leading on from the push and pull, camera movement is a really good way to create depth and it's a really underutilized tool as well in smartphone filmmaking. So here you can have a shot going down the road. You can have a shot here, for example, where at the bottom of that cathedral that we were looking at earlier and then tilt up in one movement. So you could reveal someone going to the building and then reveal what the building actually is with your camera moving, creating depth. Peering out from behind foregrounds into the deep depth of fields is a really good way to create that depth of field as well. And it just makes everything look like it's more professional. Tip number eight is using your environment movement around you. So this is a really good technique for adding depth. If you have something like a car coming from behind the camera, it reminds the audience that there's a world all around the camera that's filming. So it's not just a two dimensional shot that you're seeing. Here, when you're moving past people, as well as people moving behind you, like here in Chinatown in London, you can really see that kind of feel of you're in the middle of a world, in the middle of a crowd. Again, I use camera moving in Anxiety Train. In that same tunnel that I showed you earlier on, there's a scene where you can see here, we've got the foreground movement here as well in action. For this shot, I used motivated movement for the camera. So I actually came towards the main character as she came towards the camera and that abrupt movement created something really unusual. If you want to learn about accessories that can give you extra depth in your shots for smartphone filmmaking and video creations, then do hit up my video right here, right now on the Moments 58mm telephoto lens. See you on the next one. Take care. Bye bye.